Speak No Evil is a horror film about a family vacationing to an ominous couple's farm. It's a proper slow burn that will certainly leave you feeling uneasy. Let's talk about it. This movie is based on the Danish film by the same name. We follow Ben and Louise Dalton. While vacationing in Italy with their daughter Agnes, they meet a British couple, Patty and Sierra, who are also on vacation with their son, Ant. They all become friends, and Patty and Sierra invite the Daltons to visit their home out in the countryside. They accept the invitation, but the Daltons become increasingly uncomfortable during their stay as they start to see how strange and ignorant their hosts are. So tension carries the bulk of this film, but at its core, it's a story about envy. It's simply about looking over the fence and seeing how much greener the grass looks on the other side. This is made clear by the film's focus on the Daltons having a lot of things they're struggling with behind the scenes. And they look at how Patty and Sierra carry themselves, realizing that perhaps they could use some excitement in their lives. So being a slow burn, the majority of this film doesn't have the intense horror scares that some viewers might be looking for. What will leave you feeling uneasy is the copious amount of microaggressions made by Patty and Sierra. They are total button pushers, and it really puts Louise's patience to the test. The ways that she has to navigate them and politely set boundaries can be really stress-inducing, but in an entertaining way. The ways that Patty and Sierra create awkward tension is sometimes very subtle. For example, at one point, the kids are painting eggs. You know, they're just being very innocent and adorable children. And Sierra walks over and says, Aw, oh, Agnes, I think yours is the best. It's a very subtle microaggression, but you really feel the awkwardness because it's a strange thing for a mother to essentially devalue her child's painting skills. That might not sound intense, but when the situations reach peak awkwardness and stress, they create a lot of tension between the two families. The tension will start to increase, but then it'll get broken by Patty having some sort of explanation for his and his wife's strange behavior, and then it'll be kind of iffy for some time after, and then rinse and repeat. The movie plays out like this for a while, with tension reaching new heights each time, of course leading up to a climax where the charades just get dropped and the Daltons need to make a break for it. So if you are the type of person to pick up secondhand embarrassment from movie characters, this might be a tough one to sit through just because of the amount of awkward tension between characters. The ways that the Daltons politely try to humor their hosts and navigate their seemingly clueless behavior might be really hard to watch for viewers who can't really handle depictions of social stress. Directorially, this movie was handled very well. A lesser director would have tried to intensify the situation between the two families by directing it to be scarier. Doing things like frequently cutting to close-ups on Patty and playing eerie music over top. It was a good call to keep a neutral tone for the majority of it. It makes everything feel more awkward because it feels like we're watching an actual social situation. Building tension organically rather than trying to force it through cheap horror gimmicks. Imagine the scene example that I gave earlier playing out like this. Agnes, I think your egg is the best. Attempting to make friction in a mere social situation feel scary would have just come off as cringy more than anything. This movie does of course have one of my least favorite horror cliches, you know, where the protagonist is trapped in the middle of nowhere with people they don't know if they can trust. I literally just reviewed a movie with this setting last month. But this movie does the setting a little bit more justice because of its neutral tone. It doesn't fall into the trap of feeling obligated to toss in a bunch of jump scares or direct actors to behave like obvious sociopaths. For the most part, it does feel like an innocent vacation. We obviously know that things will eventually get out of hand, but for the majority of the movie, the Daltons don't feel threatened, and that's what really makes it feel tense. So James McAvoy was the standout of the movie. His on-screen charisma and his charm made Patty feel tolerable when he wasn't being belligerent. This made it more feasible for the Daltons to look past his occasional creepy behavior, because he's an easy person to like when you don't know what his real intentions are. I'm not too surprised by him giving a great performance. While I'm not really the biggest fan of the movie Split, his performance in that was captivating enough that I just knew that he would deliver in this type of role. Mackenzie Davis and Scoot McNary, who play the Daltons, were wonderfully milk toast. Their ordinary personalities make their dynamic with their eccentric hosts feel so much more awkward. Mackenzie Davis gave a really good performance here. She has to lean into a lot of different personalities, specifically when handling the awkward social situations. She's always putting on these facades where she acts like her hosts are actually delightful. But the effort that she puts into carrying the facades starts to slowly decrease throughout the movie, showing us that she's just gradually losing patience. So this movie's cliche setting didn't really give me much excitement for it, but... I gotta say, I was impressed. Assuming that you can tolerate a couple instances of people having someone at gunpoint with a clear shot and still somehow blowing it, you might find this movie to be pretty entertaining. It's tense, exciting, and definitely worth checking out in theaters. I'm not gonna lie, I was really not looking forward to this movie, but I was pleasantly surprised. It was actually pretty good. This is a solid watch for anyone that's looking for a good slow burn. 
But if you prefer horror films that have plenty of scares throughout them, or if you suffer from secondhand embarrassment, you might not enjoy this one. Thank you for watching this review. If it brought you any value at all, please give it a like. It really does help the channel grow. I'll see you next week with my review of A Different Man.